Hi, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 2. And now we're going to focus on the subject of 2.3 electronic configuration, tutorial question 2. So for tutorial question 2, we need to write the electronic configuration for the following atoms or ion using the SPDF notation as well as the orbital diagram. So in order for us to write the SPDF notation, we need to know the number of proton first. So the sodium, num the sodium atom will have 11 proton, in which in a neutral state, it will have 11 electron as well. So, in writing the SPDF notation, we're going to write it as S1, S2, 2S2, 2P6, and then we have 3S1. So, this is going to be the SPDF notation. And for orbital diagram, we can select whether you want it to write to write it there in boxes, in platform, or in concentric circle. For me, I will use the platform method. So I'm going to draw the orbital, 1s, 2s, 2p, and then we have the 3s. So we're going to fill it one by one, and we need to follow all the three principles, which is Ahmau, Hans rule, as well as, well as the Pauli exclusion principle. So we're going to draw 1s orbital first, so it's going to be 1, 2, and then we're going to move on to the next energy level, which is 1, 2. And then we're going to move to the next, which is 2p orbital. So according to Hans rule, we need to pair it singly first before it is paired. Okay? And each electron here has a unique set of quantum number because it follows the Pauli exclusion principle. And then we have a 3s1, so we have 1 here. Okay? And now for Na+, so for Na+, plus, you know that when they have a plus sign here, it means one electron is being donated. So it's going to remove the electron from the outermost shell or the outermost energy level, which is 3s1. So when one electron is being removed, then the electronic configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So you're just going to draw the atomic orbital diagram as usual, and then you're going to fill in there orbital so that you can get 10 electron in total. So the 3s orbital doesn't exist anymore. Alright, so the same thing you apply to chlorine. So chlorine will have 17 electron and you can write the, S the SPDF notation as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5 here. Okay, and you can also draw the orbital diagram 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s and 3p. So fill it one by one, one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So you're gonna be looking something like this. So seventeen electron in total and seventeen electron in total as well. So now we have Cl minus. Cl minus means it receives one more electron. So you're going to have 18 electrons in total, and as a result, they're going to have a, a fulfilled uh, electron, which is 3p6. So from 3p5, when it adds that one electron, it's going to be 3p6, which is a fulfilled orbital for 3p orbital here. So again, we're going to draw the orbital, and then this part here will be the same, but for the 3p, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six. So it is completely filled. All right. Now we're moving on to the question two uh, B one. So for the third question two B one, we need to explain the anomalous electronic configuration in chromium and copper. So we have discussed that in a uh, lecture, and now we're going to look at it again in the tutorial. So for chromium, you have twenty four electron, which is that here refers to a proton number, but because it is neutral, so the number of electron and proton going to be the same, which is 24. So you're going to write the SPDF notation first, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 10 already, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s2, and then you have a balance 4, and then you're going to go for 3d4. Okay, and now you're going to write the orbital diagram, and then we need to fill in the electron inside the orbital. So 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. It needs, it needs to be filled singly first before it is being packed. So you cannot draw it to be like this. So this one is wrong. Okay, so we need to follow Hans rule. And then what we, this is what we expect or what we predicted. Okay, but what actually happened is that one of the electron, one of the electron in the 4s orbital will be transferred into 3d4 orbital. So one electron from 4s2 is bring about to 3d. So it's going to become 4s1 and 3d5 at the end. And the other part here is not affected. Okay, and this situation of transferring electron can happen because the energy gap between 4s and 3d is very, very close together. So the energy difference is very, very small. And the reason why they need to form 3d5 because it's going to form a much more stable um, orbital because it can uh, form a 3d5 half fill orbital. Okay, so since you know that it formed for S1 3d5, so we're going to write it again here. Okay, and then we're going to draw the orbital diagram once again. So the part that is not affected refers to here. So you can just copy it back again. And then because you know that one of the electrons from the 4s is being transferred into 3d, so this one is going to be removed, and then uh, you just copy back 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And then one of the electrons is going to be transferred here with the same spin, because we need to follow the Hans rule. Okay, and uh, for the explanation for this is that one electron has been transferred from 4s orbital to the 3d orbital. And this is because of the energy difference of 3D and 4S is very, very small. So the half field orbital of the 3D5 in copper are more stable than partially field orbital of 3D4 at the initial stage. And this provides an extra stability. Okay, because you know that the full field orbital is going to be 3D10, which is they're going to have half, positive half and negative half. So we're going to have 10 electrons in total. But it can also form a stable orbital when it has 3d5 of the same spin. Okay, And then uh, for B2 here is an extra question. How many unpaired electrons found in actual configuration of CR? So unpaired electron here means it is a single electron. Okay, Electron yang tiada pasangan. So you can count it by yourself. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because in an orbital, they only exist singly. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and S, a 6. Okay, so it's going to become 6 electron. 1 electron from 4S and 5 electron from 5D here. Okay, now we're going to move on to the um, anomalous cases in copper. So similarly, copper will have um, 29 electron. So you're going to do the SPDF notation first, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which I have done already, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, which is 20 now, and then we have a 3d9. So we're going to draw the orbital diagram, and we need to put the labeling here. So we have 29 electron, 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 20 already. And then we have uh, 3D9 here. So we're going to be paired singly first. And then the balance 4 going to be go pair them. Okay, so we're going to become 4S2, 3D9. And this is what we expect it to be. But because of the anomalous cases, what's going to happen is that one of the electrons from the 4s is going to be transferred to 3d9. 
So what's going to happen here is that, for example, this electron here is going to be transferred into there. So because of that, um, it's going to form an, an SPDF notation of 4s1 and 3d10, which is much more stable. And this area here is not a factor. So we're going to, for the actual one, we're going to write the SPDF notation again, which is for S1 and 3D10. Okay, so we we'll draw the orbital diagram and complete the unaffected part. And for the 4S orbital, one of the electron here, okay, for example, this one, going to be transferred into 3D orbital. So it's going to become 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then because we transfer 1 to there, so it's going to become 10. 3D10. So the reason is the same, which is one electron has been transferred from 4S orbital to the 3D orbital. And this is due to the energy difference of 3D and 4S is very, very small. And the fulfilled D orbital of 3D10 in copper here, sorry, in copper are more stable than partially filled orbital of 3D9. And this provides an extra stability. And so that is why the formation of the 3D10 is much more favorable because it is much more stable. And then for question number two, we need to give the possible value of N, L, and M for the third electron in actual configuration of copper. Okay, so this is our actual one and then our third electron. So one, two, and three here. So we are looking at here. So our N here, because you know that we have two S, so our N here gonna be two. Our L, because we are we are having a, a S orbital, so it's gonna be zero. And then since our L zero, then our M gonna be zero as well. So our N L M gonna be 2, 0, and 0 here. Okay, so it's going to be 2, 0, and 0. Alright, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!